You've probably had the chance to see the Beluga XL in pictures or, if you're lucky, in person. And it's quite the aircraft. With its unique Beluga-like design, the aircraft is produced by a European aircraft manufacturer, Airbus. But it does not fly with airlines. Why is this? Let's explore that very question. Welcome back to Globetrotting, your home for analysis content. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. The Beluga XL was introduced in 2020, but produced in early 2016. The purpose of the Beluga XL was to replace the original Beluga aircraft, the Super Transporter, with the intention to move forward. But for better words to really highlight the aircraft, it transports oversized parts across Europe and the wider world where necessary. But it isn't used as a freighter plane for airlines. Why is that? Well, to begin right off the bat, you may have heard me mention transport or transporter just before. This is a word that is essential to the Beluga XL's purpose and the wider Beluga family. It's not necessarily a freighter aircraft, it's a transporter, and its mission as intended by Airbus is to move parts of aircraft from factory to factory. Thanks to its unique shape, it can allow all aircraft parts to be loaded, overall speeding up the process of manufacturing aircraft massively. Without the Beluga fleet, Airbus's production of planes would be not nearly as efficient as it is today. The Beluga helped streamline their production process for all the right reasons. For regular freighter aircraft, the type of freight that these companies will be transporting are not incredibly large pieces of aircraft usually. Instead, your smaller parts. You'd actually be amazed at the kind of things that get shipped and transported around the globe as freight. But one thing these companies usually do not do is transport, say, a part of a fuselage or a wing of a plane. That means for such a gigantically obscenely unique shaped plane, most companies don't need it. And Airbus does not see fit offering it to airlines, say your UPS or DHL. Surprisingly, the Beluga XL also has only two engines. Now, while at first look, when you see its sheer size, you'd think it should have four, but it is a common misconception. You see, the Beluga XL is actually based on the A330 series, and the A330 has two engines. So in reality, it's maybe not as powerful as one may think. Pair that with, yes, it's very odd shape, but it becomes, while a perfect transporter, not one that an aircraft can have hundreds of freighter pieces installed on. Before the Beluga XL, we had the Beluga. While not flying with airlines earlier this year, Airbus announced plans to create their own airline using these transporters that the Beluga XL helped phase out and put into retirement. The intention is to offer up services of the series to companies that need to move oversized cargo pieces. Again, we see even if the aircraft is being used for freight missions, they're specifically for oversized jobs or unique pieces of cargo, not say a couple of cars or a few boxes. It can be very similarly described to Antonov and some of the missions they run with their larger aircraft, and especially in the past, the AN-225, of course, before it was destroyed. Now, that being on the more extreme scale of sizing, but it gives you an idea on the difference between a transporter and a sole freighter aircraft. Your 747Fs, your 777Fs, even your A321 freighters. Of course, these are, while still carrying freight, their mission statement is very different to what the Beluga XL is. And that's one of the key reasons why we don't see the Beluga XL flying with, say, Qantas Freight on a chilly Monday morning. What are your thoughts? Do you like the Beluga XL? Would you like to see it flying with airlines? I think we can all agree it would look absolutely fantastic and very hilarious at the same time to see this aircraft flying with airlines. But it won't. But it will not. At the moment, the sole focus is on using it to Airbus's advantage when producing aircraft. If you have any thoughts on the aircraft, you can drop them below in the comments. Do subscribe to Globetrotting if you are new. We really do appreciate the support and we will see you next time.